In this video, we're going to continue with problems about continuous annuities from Kellison's book, The Theory of Interest, second edition. Problem 4.48 is about finding the present value of an exponentially increasing continuous perpetuity. Payments under a continuous perpetuity are made at a periodic rate of 1 plus k to the t at time t. The annual effective rate of interest is i, where k is assumed to be between 0 and i, find the present value of the perpetuity. All right, so we once again have a cash flow and h of t representing an amount of money per unit time. Amount of money per unit time. Don't be thrown off by the word periodic here. This is not a periodic function. They mean um, this is a periodic rate in the sense that it's, you know, it's being compounded like an annual rate or it could be a monthly rate. It's continuous. It's an instantaneous thing. At a given moment in time, this function is measuring the percent rate of change of growth of your money in this case uh, because k is going to be less than i. And in fact, k does have to be less than i in this case for this perpetuity that goes on forever to have a finite present value. You are getting money at a faster and faster rate if you graphed 1 plus k to the t power as a function of t. You get an increasing and concave up graph, but because, once again, because the interest rate i is bigger than k, this will have a finite present value when we discount it. In the last video, I talked about the general formula for the present value. The present value in such a situation is going to be the integral of the reciprocal of the amount accumulation function times h of t dt over whatever interval you're considering. In this case, we are letting it go on forever. It is a perpetuity. So we go from 0 to infinity. a of t is going to be 1 plus i to the t. So a of t to the negative 1 power will be 1 plus i to the negative t power, or v to the t power if you prefer. And h of t is 1 plus k to the t. Evaluate from 0 to infinity. We have, um, you know, this is the same thing as 1 over 1 plus i to the t power. We can combine these two things as 1 plus k over 1 plus i to the t power. And this is the integral that needs to be done. This is an exponential decay function that we're integrating here because k is between 0 and i. 1 plus k over 1 plus i is going to be between 0 and 1. And therefore, raising it to the t power gives an exponential decay function. This integral, this improper integral, will converge to a finite quantity. What will it converge to? Well, I hope you recall that, uh, well, let's do a little side note here. The derivative with respect to t of, say, b to the t is the natural log of b times b to the t. I am assuming here that b is positive when I look at that. And therefore, if you integrate b to the t, if you find the most general antiderivative of b to the t, you would end up dividing by natural log of b. 1 over k, 1 plus k over 1 plus i is playing the role of b here. Technically speaking, with the improper integral, there's also a limit going on. I won't bother writing the limit sign. You might be happy to hear. If your teacher wants you to write limit signs, then you should do that. We've got this thing all divided by natural log of 1 plus k over 1 plus i being evaluated from 0 to infinity. When you evaluate it at infinity, in other words, when you take the limit of this as t goes to infinity, you get 0. And then you subtract what you get when uh, you plug in t equals 0. This to the 0 power will be 1. And therefore, we get negative 1 over the natural log of 1 plus k over 1 plus i. We've got to subtract what we get when we plug in 0, a fundamental theorem of calculus. Is this a negative quantity? No, it's not negative. Uh, 1 plus k over 1 plus i is between 0 and 1, so the natural log of this is negative. Two negatives make a positive here. This is a positive quantity. It can be rewritten, for example, like this if you like. 
And that's one way to write the answer. I also could get rid of the negative sign and flip these in the bottom. Let's just leave this as the final answer. Uh, and let's just finish the video by doing an example uh, with the calculator. Let's pretend uh, that k is 0 0.04 and i is 0 0.08 so that this thing was going to be 1 over natural log of 1.08 minus natural log of 1.04. Let's just see what it is. One point zero four. the natural log of that is this. Let's store that in register 0. What's the natural log of 1.08? It's this subtract what's in register 0, and then take the reciprocal, and you get about 26.5. This is about 26.5 for the present value of this continuous payment stream when k is 0 0.04 and i is 0 0.08. Okay, but the final answer to the problem is what I circled here. And that's the end of this video.